And now we'll move into section 11.7, which will give us our overall strategy for testing series. Now, just before I jump in, this is where our test ends. We are gonna have a test that covers sections 11.1 through 11.7. A big chunk of that test is going to be, here are a bunch of series, do they converge or diverge, support your answer, what we've been doing, but again, I'm not gonna guide you to what test. It's up to you to figure out what test. And as we've also seen a little bit so far, it's not that every one problem has only one test that'll work for it. So there is some variety, but we definitely wanna have some sort of a strategy to guide you. But just before I go through that strategy, a quick reminder, that's a major part of your test, but it's not the only part. We did have sequences. We should expect a question or two or three about sequences, nothing too major, but something about sequences and their convergence and divergence. And then at the beginning, not only did we know about series convergence and divergence, we knew what they converged to. So if there are any questions about, does the series converge to what? Or maybe I tell you the series converges and just ask what they converge to, a reminder that's where telescoping and geometric series were nice because those were two that we could determine that convergence value. After that, all we could do was say converge, diverge, and then we could think about a remainder, but that was it. Okay, so now, what is this strategy? The book starts this on page 784, and it lists eight steps. But again, this is just a, set of a bunch of guidelines in a very similar way that section 7.5, when we had all of our integration techniques, just a basic framework to try and get you on the right track. So steps one and two, I mean, not exactly steps, but it's just, again, trying to think about the form that'll tell you how to handle that series. So one and two, is it a P series or a geometric series? If it is one over N to the P, if it literally starts like that, or maybe with a little manipulation can be made into one over N to the P power, that's a P series. Is P less than one, or is it, I'm sorry, less than or equal to, or is P greater than one? And that's it. We make that note, we make that comparison, and we can conclude, yes, P is three greater than one converges. P is two thirds less than one diverges. And that's it. Similar with geometric series. The book points out AR to the N minus one, but as we've been saying for a while, if you could see it's just R to the N, that works just as well. And the absolute value of R. Absolute value of R greater than or equal to one diverges. Absolute value of R less than one converges. Number three, they start, well, what if it's not geometric or P-series, but close to it? Well, that's where we said we'll use the comparison tests. Step four, well, what if you could quickly see the underlying sequence doesn't go to zero? Well, that's where you should use the test for divergence. Number five, does it have that minus one to a term? Minus one to the N minus one, minus one to the N, minus one to the N plus one. If it has that, that makes it an alternating series, so maybe the alternating series test will work. Step six, notice we're talking about steps, but it's not like you have to follow these in order. It's just pointing out we've, what we've said the entire time. Looking at the series, and these are the different things hopefully we'd notice. So you don't have to go through them one, two, three, four, five, but it's what are the things you should be looking for? Is it a series you already know? Do the underlying terms, not are they not going to zero? Do you have alternating? Next, they talk about ratio and root test. If you see a factorial, if you see those combinations of P-series and geometric series, if you see something to the N power, well, all the previous would be ratio test. If everything is written to the N power, then the root test. So those are steps six and seven. But then the funny thing, as we said way back at the beginning, the integral test was one of the first tests we introduced, but that should kind of be your last option. 
So that might be the one case where I tell you definitively in the directions, use the integral test because I want you to show me that you know the conditions that must be satisfied, can demonstrate that they are satisfied, and then can apply the test itself through the improper integral. But if you're doing that on your own, that's kind of one of the last things you should try. Okay, so we've said a lot. I haven't written anything down, and I'm still not going to. So you could read through all that in your book. And again, we've discussed all those possibilities. Examples one through six, those are ones you should also really, really look at. Take your time. They're all really, really good examples. They, one step at a time. They're not going in order. Well, this is step one. This one is item number three. They really bounce around, but they very clearly get you on track. And just like I'm going to do in a minute, it's mostly just going to be what to do then it's up to you to be able to actually go through and apply those appropriate tests. So let's take a look at a bunch of problems. I have these written up from a previous review. So let's look at all these. Do the following series converge or diverge support your answer? That's all we're looking for here. And this first problem, minus one to the n plus one over n cubed. Well, I see that minus one to a term. That's an alternating series. You could apply the alternating series test. That will work. Option number two, some of you might notice that n to the p power, that may really stand out. But that minus one gets in the way. If you take the absolute value of this, you would end up with one over n cubed, which is a convergent p series. So that's a second alternative. You could think about the absolute convergence. So again, that's not a formal test, but some people call it that. You could think about this as absolutely convergent, but notice that only worked because the P-series was a convergent P-series. You come to the second one. This is not a P-series, but it's awfully close. That plus two is in the way. Without that plus two, that is a P-series. So with that plus two, it's similar to a P-series, but not exact. This is a comparison test. Compare to one over n cubed. Again, have to note that that converges. And then, well, do you want the regular comparison test? Since one over n cubed converges, you would need this is smaller than that. And it works out that way. Bigger denominator leads to smaller fraction. So this does work with the regular comparison test. But if you didn't notice that or still don't feel great with those inequalities, the limit comparison would work fine. Over here, this at a quick glance, some people may feel similar to this problem. It has P-series components in both top and bottom. But this one, if you try the comparison test, well, what to compare to? Thinking about dominant terms, N over N is one. So it doesn't really feel like you're comparing to a P-series. But that hopefully would point us in the other direction, the underlying limit. All of this, as dominant terms, would go to the four-thirds power. So this to the four, I'm sorry, all of this would have a limit of four-thirds, not four-thirds power, I'm sorry, would have a limit of four-thirds. Four-thirds is not zero. This fails the test for divergence. Well, I guess you could say it passes the test for divergence. So the original series diverges. Now we come here. And again, other little things we could say as well, but that's your best route. If you do a comparison test, you would have to compare to something that diverges. Still a little awkward though, that's your best way. If all of this was then to the n power, well, that would be a different situation. That would then be a situation we'd want a root test. All of this to the n power, take the nth root of that, still have to do some work for the limit, but that would be a way to solve that series. Again, all of this to the n power. Looking at this one, this one, very similar to this one. This was similar to a P-series because of the plus two. This get rid of the minus three, and you would have a geometric series. So this one we would compare with a geometric series. Compare to five to the n over seven to the n, five-sevenths to the n is a convergent geometric series. 
again, just like we mentioned here, do you want to then do a limit comparison? Would you rather do the, um, the direct comparison? Well, remember, the direct comparison, the inequality has to work. And once again, we're lucky that this one does. We're comparing this to something that converges. That extra minus 3 would make the numerator smaller. So this whole thing would be smaller than the 5 over 7 to the n. So the inequality does work. But if the inequality didn't work, like if this was a plus 3, then you'd have to do the limit comparison test. Now we're looking at this one. There's the factorial. You're doing a ratio test. This next one. Well, both of these, that to the n power, this is a good situation. Not as perfect as what I said here. If all of this was to the n power, that's not quite as perfect as what we have here. But both of these pieces are raised to the n, so we could pull that out, e squared over n all to the n power. And then that makes that a perfect situation for a root test. This one p-series components. Very complicated though, not like this one. This one get rid of the plus two, one over n cube staring at you. Here you got to get rid of a bunch of terms. You'd have to ignore the four and n squared over n cubed. You should compare this to one over n. But now that's where the comparison, one over n would diverge right, either as a p-series, p equal 1, or as the harmonic series. So this has to be bigger than that in order to conclude this also diverges with the regular comparison test. But that's not obvious, okay? That's not an easy, quick inequality to figure out. It may not even be true. So that's probably one where most of us would do the limit comparison test. This one, that cosine pi n. Not obvious right off the bat, but if you're not sure what to do, try plugging in some terms. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 2 pi is positive 1. That is alternating in the same way that was alternating. So the alternating series test would work pretty well here. 1 over 2n plus 3 would be what you focus on, and that would work like a charm. Here, just a bunch of terms. But if you work on the general formula to figure out what is the underlying formula for the general term, you'd get 1 over the square root of n. That would be 1 over n to the 1 half power. That's a p-series. p is 1 half less than 1 diverges. Here, very much like this one, there's that factorial. No extra factorial to simplify this. There's a factorial. Other pieces... You know, just like this one up here, that's a P-series component, that's geometric, and then factorial. Now it's all flip-flop. Now the factorial is on the top, P-series component in the denominator, geometric series component in the denominator. Doesn't matter where they are, has the factorial, ratio test is going to work well. And then finally, this last one, geometric component, geometric component mixed with a P-series component this is another good ratio test problem. So that's it. That's all we get from section 11.7. I didn't write any notes down. You could certainly just read along with the book just to remind yourself, but it's things we've been saying the whole time. We've tried to always point out when those tests work well. So now when they're mixed together, we already have good, uh, good intuition based on our earlier experience. And then secondly, again, I said a lot of work here. Certainly, if you have any questions, if you're starting to apply the tests, maybe you're not quite seeing how it works, certainly could always email me to get some extra help with that. But that is a good bunch of problems to consider and try and get ready for this test. Again, I also, I have a few other things written on this. You know, just again, a reminder about sequences. We mentioned that at the beginning of 11.7. Don't forget, there could be some basic sequence questions. Here, I'm telling you the series converge, so it's just a matter of to what. So you'd have to just figure out, well, there's really only two possibilities. It's got to work nicely by figuring out Sn, the sequence of partial sums, to get the convergence value. You know it'll converge, I'm telling you that, but just figure out what it converges to. Or it's a geometric series, 
and then we could use the a over one minus r formula to figure it out. Here, I just had a few problems, just again, telling you specifically to use the integral test to make sure you're testing the necessary conditions and then properly applying the test before just giving you a whole bunch of just do they converge, diverge. So in addition to just testing this, there's a few other good quick reminders to consider what else could be on the test.